Hi to all. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, obviously, uh, you're under uh, tough circumstances with uh, the loss of uh, Joey. Um, condolence to uh, his family and uh, obviously uh, all of Canada, not just Edmonton. Obviously, he was so instrumental with uh, uh, the Oilers and the Eskimos, but uh, we are truly saddened by this and, uh, you know, it uh, it's obviously uh, an inspiration that he was in that locker room, all the way out into his seat in the in the stands, and uh, he'll never be forgotten for sure. And uh, just uh, it's a sad, sad day in the hockey world. Jason, go ahead. Hi, folks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on here and obviously uh, talk about uh, Joe and. Wish his, his family condolences. I think uh, being around Joe and, and having an opportunity to to spend years with him was was very special. I think uh, what he brought to uh, the Oilers organization as well as the uh, the football team uh, was very special. And to to be um, a part of watching him uh, watching him grow and I think uh, what he passed on to to us all was how positive a life is and you know there, there's never a bad day when uh you're doing things that you love and and that was something that was uh one of the greatest memories of joe was just his, his positivity and, and how he uh how he went about his, his daily business and uh wish his family the best and all the fans and uh support that he, he's gotten from from around the country is uh very special and and something that uh it's great to see him recognized for uh, the legend that he was. Thanks, Jason. Sam? Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, just kind of echoing uh, what uh, Jason and Ryan had to say, I think, um, you know, Joey is uh, w one of the, the, the best uh, men I've ever had the chance to get to know. Um, just the way he, uh, he, he lit up a room and, um, he, he was such a positive spirit. Um, you know, I think, you know, as much as it's a really sad day, um, you know, I think just getting a chance to celebrate uh, his life and, um, you know, everything he was able to accomplish and the impact he had on people, um, it, it's something that's really important. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, obviously the circumstances aren't great uh, right now because, you um, you know, if, if the borders are open and things are open, I think we'd probably have a million people at this, at this funeral, um, celebrating Joe and, um, you know, condolences to his family, uh, to, to everyone that, um, you know, he had a chance to touch their lives. I mean, uh, just having a chance to, to talk to, to certain teammates and, uh, you know, trainers that have been around him. His life was so impactful. He lived such a full life and, um, you know, I, I, I'm so happy to see that kind of the out, outpouring of support. Um, and, you know, he deserves it all. So uh, just, uh, you know, thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be a part of this. Thanks, guys. Those are all great thoughts on Joey. Uh, we'll open up to questions now. So, again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And if you have multiple questions, I'll leave you open for a follow-up. So we'll start with Rob Tichkowski from Post Media. Rob, you can go ahead. Hi guys, thanks for doing this. Uh, if one or a couple, can you uh, you can kind of visit this? It's kind of a, a rite of passage for every player who who joins the Oilers. You 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 roll into the dressing room and you know you know this is Joey Moss and you know he's probably going to be uh, working for this team longer than anybody else. I just wonder what everybody's first reaction is because some people when they see a handicapped person for the first time they they don't know how to react they don't know how to get comfortable. What was it like seeing him for the first time and how long until you were totally comfortable uh, being around Joey? Anybody? Go ahead. I'll go. Uh, well, I think just the first time I got to meet Joe was, was probably the day I got uh, traded and, and welcomed into the Oilers locker room between between Joe and Sparky and, and Sliver and Barry Stafford and Kenny Lowe. The welcome was great, but uh, to see the excitement in Joe and welcoming him someone new uh, made it very family-like. And I think uh, Joe was a huge part of, of that family, and I think that's something that the Oilers have always been is, is a very family oriented team. And, and uh, he, he brought a smile to your face. He was happy every day. 
he enjoyed what he did, which which made it uh, you know very easy for you as a player to come into that room and start your day off of coffee with coffee with Moss and and go from there. It was uh, it was great to be around him every day, and it was uh, just very very welcoming every time you walked into the room. Smitty, you wanna you wanna go or go ahead, I, yeah um, yeah. I think, um, you know, my first memory of Joe, um, uh, it, it, the first kind of inter-squad game every year is the Joey Moss Cup, and he comes out and sings the anthem. And, um, you know, I hadn't, uh, you know, being a young guy and uh, not being around, I, I, I didn't know much about him. And then you see, he, he comes out and just belts both, anthem, both anthems and, you know, in front of all those people, and there's, there, there's no fear in them. And, uh, you know, you look around and the guys that have have been around them a little more and had been around the team and you, you can just see them beaming with pride that they're, you know, friends with Joey. And, um, you know, I, you kind of know at that moment that you're part of something special and uh, you, um, you, you know, you're, you're just rel it's relishing the opportunity to get a chance to get to know Joe. So I think it was funny for me. Uh, I came in as, you know, an 18 year old and, uh, you know, I think the, the older guys would give it to me and Joe picked up on it I think as a <laughs> and he was he used to just give it to me all the time and um, I, I lived for that banter uh, coming into the room uh, in the morning and just seeing Joe and you know having a coffee and just like uh, you know it, it was just a, it was the best times ever uh, it's something I'll, I'll cherish forever and uh, it was just a ton of fun yeah, great ones, boys. Uh, yeah, for me, the first time I walked in, uh, I was obviously a big Oilers fan growing up, and and uh, Gretz was my childhood hero, and and with Gretz, it was uh, Joe Moss. I mean, they pretty much came hand in hand. So um, he was inspirational when I walked in the room. He he couldn't say my name properly, and and and, and, and uh, he would he would say Flibby. He couldn't say Smith. Or Smitty, like it was Flibby, and um, yeah, I kind of uh, brought some inspiration in the in the into my game. Uh, um, but more importantly, he was uh, a guy that was hardworking. He did what he was told to do, but then he was given time by Sparky or Staffy or Kenny to to be a little loose, as as Gags talked about in the in the locker room. And one really fond memory that I remember was and it was probably within the first week is the La Bamba and him dancing in the middle of the locker room uh with all the guys and and just you know everybody belts out La Bamba but he's off tune but he's just belting it out playing an air guitar and he was having a blast and and whether it would be a, a hard practice and you come in it was just relieving to know that a guy like that was uh uh, meant so much to uh, to the organization. Uh, that was one huge fond memory within the first week that I uh, that I got there at Edmonton. I uh, I wanted to delve in a little bit to the uh, the wrestling matches that you guys that that's, that uh, he would have. Like these were epic showdowns. You'd you'd roll into the rest dressing room in the morning and and there would be like a buzz in the air, like monsters fighting for the title tonight. Now obviously we never got to see that inner circle stuff, but I mean, what was it like when you've, you know, there's Joey Moss taking on George LaRock or Dustin Penner for the title? Eggs, I think you could touch on this one. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm owing three against them. I think I'm gonna try, <laughs> try to lose to them, but uh, yeah, no, it was. Um, I remember the first time it happened. So he, um, he, he'd have his own walk-in music, right? We play kid rock or whatever. And he'd walk in and the whole room would boo him. And, and he would, he, 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 like, he loved being the villain when it, when it came to the wrestling matches, right? Like I couldn't believe it. Like everyone's booing Joey, but he loved it. You know, he just, he, he relished that. Um, and then, you know, the fight got going and he was so into it. And, you know, he was going, uh, he's going to the side of the room, like tapping out, like, like saying he had the ropes so you couldn't get him. And there was just, there were so many different matches that he had that, uh, you know, were just so much fun. And like, he, you prepare for it the whole week. I mean, somebody told me the first day that I, uh, that I had to wrestle him. It was my, my, my first year playing. And I was like, oh, I, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's do this. So. 
I remember coming to the rink and I had these, um, my, uh, one of the billet moms in London made me these uh, London Knights boxers that I played junior with. I had my number, the London Knights logo on them. And I thought they were cool at the time, but obviously they weren't. And, um, Joe comes out for the wrestling match and all he's got on are these boxers, my boxers. If someone had gone into the, the Your stall, boxers. my boxers and Joe's, Joe's wearing them. And I'm just like, Oh, are you kidding me? And, uh, he, he loved it. He thought, he thought it was the funniest thing ever. And he, you know, he was, he was laughing at me after it was just, it was a great time. And, um, one of my favorite things was every time he would lose, uh, he would fake an injury. So <laughs> he'd be limping out of the room. He'd go to the trainer's table and say, Oh my, it was my leg. You know, like that's the only reason I didn't win or whatever. And then 10 minutes later, he'd be completely fine. So it was, uh, it, you know, those, some of those memories, um, you know, just talking with some of the guys about it, it's just, you know, things that you'll remember forever and uh, just really put a smile on your face. And um, it's just, you know, such a fun time in our lives. Great, thank you. Didn't he buy a, a belt for him or there was a belt? Yeah, there was a championship belt that, um, he, yeah, he was never in possession of really, uh, unless he was fighting me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he, you know, when, when he had a chance to fight for that belt, boy, was he fired up. So I, I remember first couple of years, you would, you know, you'd see him uh, warming up in, in the gym. He'd be on the bike. He'd be, you know, doing his calisthenics, getting ready. Um, and you know, that, that kind of faded as time went on, but, uh, uh boy, are those, those were fun times. No, oh, that's beautiful. Thanks guys. <laughs> Great. Next questions, Adam Cook, Adam, go ahead. My condolences guys on, on the loss of your friend. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, all of you guys left. And then, you, you know, you, you come back, whether you're, you're back with the orders or you're with a different team. What was it like when you, when you reconnected with Joey after kind of spending that time away? What was it like? Yeah, yeah I think you yeah, just pick off, uh, pick up where you left off. For, for me, when I first came back, it was, uh, he recognized me. Couldn't say my name, but uh, he recognized me. And uh, um, it was, it was great. I mean, uh, Langer was around, so I mean, you think of you think of the transition that he had to go through with the trainer Sparky, and then and Staffy to Langer and and um, uh, the training the, the the training staff now. So I mean, there was so much going on in his world too, but um, he still remembered players, um, and you know he like like uh, Gator and and uh, Gags have said the fact that. Uh, that he would sit down and still have a coffee with you or he'd be folding the towels right there and you'd, you'd still pick up uh, where he left off with them. Yeah, very much the same here. I think, uh, you know, when you come back there, once you're an oiler, you, you were always a part of that family and, and, and Joe never let, let that go by. I think there was, there was many times when, as an Oiler player, you were sitting in, in the locker room getting ready for a game, and Joe might not have been around because he was down hanging out in the visitor's room, you know, socializing with old teammates or, or old former players. And, you know, some of the memories I have were when, when Bucky came to town or, or Dougie Waite or, or Billy Guerin, he would be down in the visitor's room, and we'd have to check and make sure that uh, he was uh, cheering for the Oilers that night and not cheering for the other team because his buddy was down the hall. But... He always came back to, to the Oiler room and uh, definitely supported uh, the, uh, the Oiler group more than, than any other group out there, that's for sure. Yeah, no, my, my favorite thing, I mean, uh, just touching on, on that a little bit more, um, you know, like the Oilers meant so much to him. Uh, being part of that family meant so much to him. And, um, you know, he, he was such a loyal guy. So, you know, there was times – you'd come back and you go to take a picture with him. You try and sneak, uh, you know, when I first got traded to Arizona, you try and sneak a Coyotes hat on him. And there was, there was none of that. Um, you know, he was, he was Oilers through and through. Um, you know, I think uh, the, the one thing for me, I, I, every time I came back with an opposing team, I'd be like, guys, do you guys know anything about Joey? You, you got to meet Joey. So I would, uh, you know, I'd make sure that the trainers would bring him over and, and he'd get a chance to interact with the other teams. And 
um, you know, he's just uh, such a great person to have around. And, you know, no matter what's going on in, in your season at the time, there's a lot of ups and downs that, that happen throughout an NHL season. Joe, his, his, his energy and his uh, positivity is, is a constant. And, um, you know, wherever you were at, it, it always helped you. So it was always a, it was, it was a great thing coming back and getting a chance to see him. He was the common link, obviously, for generations of Oilers players. I mean, he was always the mainstay. He was always there. You can count on it. And people are asking, what's going to be the proper tribute for a guy like this that just had such a dominating presence in Edmonton and especially in the Edmonton sports landscape? And Gretzky was saying today, it's got to be something that will stand the test of time. What would you like to see as a tribute for Joy, whether it be a statue? What do you guys think is fitting? Yeah, there's so many things under the sun that you could uh, be, that he could be recognized for sure. Um, to me, I think um, he came in with Gretz and he goes up with Gretz as far as the banner. That would be my uh, my opinion. But uh, you know, even even into the city itself, like the city of champions, you come in and there's a statue of him. Uh, there's so many things that uh, I know. There's been lots of um, things talked about uh, amongst within and uh, you know it's just uh, what is best you know what is truly best for the number one fan uh, of the Edmonton Oilers and like Gator said it's once an Oiler always an Oiler and he will always be remembered as that and um, he's uh, a, a legend that will be will be missed. Yeah I think from what Smitty said I think there's so many good ideas out there that uh, can be rambled about and talked about, but you know something that did pass the test of time will, will definitely be something the Oilers will do and, and the city will do. I think when you have uh, a person that's brought so much to so many people in, in so many different ways and touched so many hearts, I think, let alone just in the city of Edmonton, I think you know there's a possibility that, that, that he's touched so many hearts across across the National Hockey League that the the National Hockey League will take it upon themselves to, to honor him in some way as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I think you need something that's, that stands the test of time. I mean, um, Joey meant so much to so many people. He's such an inspiration. And, um, you know, it, it's hard to, uh, to do enough, really. Um, I used to love, uh, you know, you'd have a team issued jersey, you get guys to sign. And so everyone put their name and their number. And you get Joey to sign, and he'd put his name in big block letters, and he put 98 beside it. And I'm like, well, what's the 98? And he goes, well, Gretzky, he's 99. So I, I can't wear that. So he was one He was one left, he's 98. Uh, I used to love that. So I don't know if you put a banner up there that says Moss 98. Um, I just – I don't think there's enough you can do, honestly, to, to for his legacy and, and the impact he had on people. But uh, – just hopefully it's something that, uh, you know, stands the test of time. Thanks, guys.